Greetings to the community of the Parliament of World Religions. My name is Terry Tempest Williams, and I come to you from the ancestral and traditional homelands of the Nuuk people, Ute, Mountain Ute, Ure Ute, who live here still, and we honor them in these sacred lands. Finding beauty in a broken world is creating beauty in the world we find. And what I can tell you from the American Southwest is that we had a celebration and a ceremonial gathering of people from all over the Four Corners region honoring President Biden's decision to restore Bears Ears National Monument, the traditional grounds and healing spaces for the Diné, Navajo, Hopi, Zuni, Ute, Mountain Ute, and Ure Ute people. It was a good day, and it felt like the beginning of reparations. Finding beauty in a broken world is creating beauty in the world we find. We've had a rough season this summer, early fall, in the American West, with over 7 million acres of fire burning these lands. Here in Utah, in the Red Rock Desert of the Colorado Plateau, we had temperatures up to 114 degrees. We are in the middle of a drought. And in these mountains, south to us, over 10,000 acres burned. It feels that in this pause that is now a place, it is a transformative place. The pandemic has shown all of us that this is a liminal moment, a transformative moment, both a reckoning and an awakening at once. I can tell you that I've taken to night walking where cooler temperatures prevail and one can walk with the stars and I'm amazed at how our eyes pull color out of darkness. Light intensifies. We are not alone. Looking up into the constellations, I feel that they are the eyes of ancestors for all of us. Truly, the eyes of the future are looking back at us and they are praying that we might see beyond our own time. What are we to make of this moment? What are we to make of this climate collapse? I do not think it is just an ecological crisis or a political crisis, but rather a spiritual one. And as the theologian Larry Rasmussen has said, can we love this earth enough to change? Can we love each other enough to change? I want to share with you just a, a short piece from something I wrote called A Burning Testament. A young friend, Bianca, asked me from Los Angeles at a moment when she was very scared, wondering what the future was, what these fires meant, and this smoke we were all enveloped in smoke. And when she woke up that morning, the only thing she could think about was an obituary for the land. And she said, Terry, will you write one? A pre-pandemic me would have said, I can't. But the liminal me in between these moments, these times of uncertainty and beauty said, I will try. And here's an excerpt. We cannot breathe. This is our mantra in America now. We cannot breathe because of the smoke. We cannot breathe because of a virus that has entered our homes. We cannot breathe because of police brutality and too many black bodies and brown bodies dead on the streets. We cannot breathe because we are holding our breath for the people and places we love. I was asked to write an obituary for the land, but I realize I am writing an obituary for us, for the life we have lost and can never return to. And within this burning of Western lands, our innocence and denial is in flames. The obituary will be short. The time came and these humans died from the old ways of being. Good riddance. It was time. Their cause of death 
was the terminal disease of solipsism, whereby humans put themselves at the center of the universe. It was only about them. And in so doing, they had been dead to the world that is alive. To the power of these burning, illuminated Western lands that have shaped our character, inspired our souls, and restored our belief in what is beautiful and enduring, I will never write your obituary. Because even as you burn, you are throwing down seeds that will sprout and flower. Trees will grow and forests will rise again as living testaments to how one survives change. It is time to grieve and mourn the dead and believe in the power of renewal. If we do not embrace our grief, our sadness will come out sideways in unexpected forms of depression and violence. We must dare to find a proper ceremony to collectively honor the dead from the coronavirus as we approach over 4.5 million citizens globally lost. We must honor the lives engulfed in these Western fires and the lives we will continue to lose from the climate crisis at hand. Only then can we begin the work of restoration, respecting the generations to come as we clear a path toward cooling a warming planet. This will be our joy. Let this be a humble tribute, an exaltation, an homage, and an open-hearted eulogy to all we are losing, to fire, to floods, to hurricanes and tornadoes, and the invisible virus that has called us all home and brought us to our knees. We are not the only species that lives and loves and breathes on this miraculous planet we call Earth. May we remember this and raise a fistful of ash to all the lives hold, lost that it holds. Grief is love. How can we hold this grief without holding each other close? To bear witness to this moment of undoing is to find the strength and spiritual will to meet the dark and smoldering landscapes where we live. We can cry. Our tears will fall like rain in the desert and wash off our skins of ash so our pores can breathe, so our bodies can breathe back the lives that we have taken for granted. The world is still so beautiful. I will mark my heart with an X made of ash that says the power to restore life resides here. The future of our species will be decided here, not by facts, but by love and loss. Hand on my heart, I pledge allegiance to the only home I will ever know. May we pledge our allegiance to this beautiful, broken planet we call home. Deep gratitudes.